Hi, this is Amar. Now let us discuss about the Chinese civilization. First, where did Chinese civilization start? For that, let us look at the Chinese geography. There are major three river valleys in China. Three major river valleys. They are one, the Yellow River Valley or the Huangho River Valley. Two, the Yangtze River Valley and 3 the sea river valley now chinese civilization started in the yellow river valley so yellow river is known as the mother river of china after that slowly the civilization moved towards south it extended towards south so we also call chinese civilization as the gift of the yellow river now let us look at the dynasties in the civilization the first dynasty in Chinese civilization is known as the Shang dynasty. Before that, we also have Shia dynasty. But we really don't know if it really existed or it's just a mythical one. So we don't consider it as the first dynasty. Before that, we call these times as the prehistoric times. We don't really have any uh, evidences about that time, historical times. So, we consider the Shang dynasty as the first dynasty of China. It existed around 1600 BCE and it ruled China for about five, for more than 500 years. The major cities of this Shang dynasty were Erlito, Zhengzhou and Anyang. Anyang is the capital city of Shang dynasty. These three cities uh, they lied on the plains of the Yellow River. Now what the major points of this Shang dynasty are cultural advancement was made during this period. Silk weaving started during this period and the basics of the Chinese language of Chinese language were formed during this dynasty. So after the 500 years ruling of this Shang dynasty, then it was overthrown, it was replaced by the Zhou dynasty. So after the decline of the Shang dynasty, Zhou dynasty took its place. This Zhou dynasty is the longest ruling dynasty of Chinese history. It ruled for about 800 years. So its period is divided into Western Zhou period and the Eastern Zhou period. In Western Zhou period, Luoyang was the capital city of the Zhou dynasty. And in this period, they exported silk and porcelain to the other countries. Here in this period, the Zhou dynasty was divided into several states major seven states which uh, which were controlled by local lords these local lords fought against each other for control and this led to decline of the zhou dynasty this started the eastern zhou period in this period this period is also divided into two one is the war seasons period and the other is the warring states period this war seasons period is also known as the spring and autumn period spring and autumn period in this period the zhou dynasty was only on the name but it was not ruling the china the seven states local lords were ruling their own states so here the philosophers thinkers intellectuals and teachers they could provide their services to the local lords so this period is known was known as the hundred schools of thought hundred schools of thought this period was known as and also many religions uh, emerged in this period confucianism by confucius then after that taoism by lao tzu and mohism by modi emerged then after this war seasons period 
Warring States period. The second half of the Eastern Zhou period is known as the Warring States period. In this period, the major seven states fought against each other. So this, they waged bitter wars against each other. And this period was completely chaotic. So they waged wars against each other to control the other states too. And one succeeded. He was King Jin, one of the lords of uh, a state. And he uh, waged wars and occupied all the other six states and unified China. He established the Qin dynasty. This was the end of the Zhou dynasty and Qin dynasty came to power. So King Zhen, King Zhen after defeating the other six states, he unified the China. He renamed himself as Qin Shi Huangdi. And he formed the Qin dynasty. This was the start of imperialism in China. He is considered as the first emperor of China. So he was the first emperor of China. So what are his contributions? Let us look at them. The first one is the Great Wall of China. This is the longest wall till now and it is one of the seven wonders of the world. This was built, uh, he, Qin Shi Huangdi, the emperor, he unified the existing walls and formed the Great Wall of China. It is about 6700 kilometers length and with a width of 5 to 8 meters. It has shooting platforms. Shooting platforms and uh, weapon stores were built in it. Weapon stores. So, Great Wall of China. Then, this emperor was the first to recruit the civil servants. He was the first to start it. Then, the Terracotta Army. Terracotta Army is an army of idle soldiers which was believed to protect the king after his death, to protect the emperor after his death. So, Terracotta Army. Then, some of the major things that this emperor has done is standardized. He has standardized the weights, measures and money and he introduced round coins with a hole in their middle so that people could carry them easily with a string or a thread. And he unified the legal code. He modernized the Chinese language. So these were his contributions. Also, he caused destruction by burning most of the ancient philosophical writings. So this was his destruction. Now this Qin dynasty declined due to a peasant revolt led by Lin Bang. So Lin Bang, he overthrew the Qin dynasty and formed the Han dynasty. So Lin Bang renamed himself as Han Gaoju. Lin Bang renamed himself as Han Gaoju and he formed the Han dynasty. This was the period of invention and science. So many inventions and science developed in this uh, region, in this period. The first suspension bridge was invented, paper and Chinese medicines were invented. So. Overall, this is an era of peace and prosperity. And this allowed China to grow into a world power. So, after this dynasty, many other dynasties came, many other dynasties. And at last, the last dynasty was known as the Manchu dynasty or or the Qing dynasty. Qing. So, Manchu dynasty or the Qing dynasty. After this, okay. Qing dynasty. So, after this, in 1911, Republic of China was formed by Sun Yat-sen and in 1945, 
1949 people's republic of china was formed by mao zedong so let's recall first the prehistoric times then the xia dynasty we don't have any evidence for this dynasty then the shang dynasty the first dynasty of china then the zhou dynasty first the western zhou dynasty and then the eastern zhou dynasty in this the first half is the spring and autumn period that is the hundred schools of thought then the warring states period then the unification of china and the qin dynasty was formed then the han dynasty and then uh, after the many dynasties we find the qing dynasty or manchu dynasty and in 1911 republic of china was formed and in 1945 1949 people's republic of china was formed this is about the chinese civilization thank you